The Backdrop CMS version 1.0 was released yesterday, and I've got it downloaded, and we're going to get it installed and take a quick tour around the software. So let's see. Let's first, I've got it version 1.0, you can see there. We're going to expand it. And then I've already created a mapping in my Apache, so I'm going to move this to... The, just the backdrop directory. And you can see I've, I'm using this test area for some Drupal sites too. So now I've got an install, so I should be able to go over here to my environment and bring up the install screen. So I've already created a user and a database to get this ready for backdrop. And you can see the process is slightly different from Drupal, but much the same. So we're gonna put in here the database name and it's backdrop, I've just got And we can look at the advanced options. We're not going to change anything here or have any table prefixes. So once the database configuration is set, you can see it pretty quickly will go through and start initializing and setting up and enabling the default configuration for the site. So once this is done, you can see it'll give us the ability to configure the site, put in the site name, So let's do this. And we'll just call this backdrop. You can see there, there's a nice password meter. That's new. It's telling me the password is poor. That's fine. This is for my local environment. I don't want to receive email notifications to this one. And let's save and continue. And at this point, it'll complete the setup and it'll be taken to our default site once this completes. So you can see the process is pretty seamless. This looks much like Drupal. You can see it has the admin menu here, which I like to install on every single Drupal site I work on. So it's good to see that built in a core. So let's take a look around. We've got two different content types established. And let's just add some content. We can see test. By default, there is no WYSIWYG editor in the core. That's supposed to be coming with version 1.0. 1.1, 1 .1, I'm sorry. So that is that will hold some users back, not being able to use that WYSIWYG. So here's our first little piece of content. We can, it's pretty much like Drupal. We can see comments, so very similar here. The people, you can see we've got the one user. If we view this, we can, you know, it's a very familiar environment to what we're used to. Appearance. We're using, just it came in with a generic Bartik theme. So if you've installed Drupal, you, uh, played with this before. It has the color module enabled as part of core, so you can very easily change some of these colors by just clicking in there, and you can see very, very nice for the site owner to be able to go in here and change some of these default colors if you use the default theme. We can look at the other themes that are here. The seven is the administrator theme, and that's the only other theme, so it only comes with Bartik. Bartik is responsive in this case. It's been updated. Under functionality, we can see this is where we have our modules. And if we view the modules, you can see it gives us a nice module filter page here. So I can quickly start typing in here and limit exactly the module I'm looking for. Out of the box, it installs with most everything already enabled. Administration bar, these are some of the new features included. The configuration manager, we'll take a look at that shortly. Comments, taxonomy. So for most sites, this is these features are going to be the ones you install. If you need a multi-language site, this is you'll enable these. And of course the views and the views UI, which is built into core. So we made no change, so we don't need to save that. 
Under structure, we can see this is very similar to Drupal. We've got different content types. We can view the, the information here and look at the fields that have been established. Very similar to Drupal 7. So if you've used it, you're going to feel right at home. Now, what's changed a little bit is the block system. So we can add a custom block. We're just going to add some content here. And we'll also give it a title of test block. Well, and we'll save it. And so it looks very similar. I don't have any views or anything else enabled. There's no, we're not seeing the, the Drupal blocks that are built in a core here. We'll see those actually in the layout area. So the layout is separated from the block generation. So when we look at the layout, Drupal comes with a default layout. We click the edit here. We can see this is a much more intuitive screen, I'd like to think, than the current system. So if I want to add a block, that new block to the sidebar, you can see the custom blocks show up right at the top. It'll preview it. It'll give me the ability to add some conditions here, which is which is very nice. And we can also enable a style, and that was missing from core two, the block class module, which is very handy. If I want to change the order, I just drag and drop. Pretty friendly. And then save the layout. Now, if we want to create a new layout, it works pretty much a similar way. We can do and we can see that it, it comes complete with a couple different formats for this. So having this custom layout will, will prevent, will enable some sites to be able to use just a regular theme, any theme to make their site work without having to go in and define a custom template. Now we can add conditions for this. So let's say, let's just make this for the front page. And we're not going to reverse it. So add condition. And we can see here is the condition. So we can add additional conditions. We can say, hey, where the user is logged in, where the user role is not anonymous. So we'll try it that way. And create layout. So it's going to make me want to do something different than here. So we'll do that. Actually, this is for the front page. This is sort of redundant because I've got the condition establishing that, but it does want the path. And we have a little bug here, but that's it's to be expected for version one of this software. Let's try it again with that node in there. So that does not work again. Let's try this one more time. select one of these other layouts let's remove this maybe that is causing a conflict so let's remove that too okay so now it did actually create that new layout so we'll have to look at that and see we shouldn't have got those errors, but it's understandable. And we can see there's a context here. Very clear what's set on the path. And if we try to add a condition here, we can say where node type is an article. Save layout. So now it seems to be working really well. And again, we can just move the different items, reposition them where we want them to, to be. So add a search form. So very friendly, very nice layout. I think this will be more intuitive for site builders to be able to build their, their block layout in one place. That was very cumbersome with Drupal in that all the block placement was done on one page unless you used a module like Context. Menus, we'll just take a quick look at those. Comes with some default 
menus are very much the same as other versions of Drupal. Taxonomy is also identical. You can list the terms. If there's no terms, we add a term, test. So this is all very familiar. Under configuration, we can see this is much the same as what we have right now in Drupal 7. And what we really want to look at here is the configuration management. This is what's new in Backdrop. This will enable you to develop a site in one location and then easily deploy it by exporting all the configuration settings without having the configuration settings stored in the database. What happens is once you deploy a site, oftentimes you'll want to work in a test environment, make the changes, add some new views, and deploy those in real. In Drupal 7 and earlier versions, it has been very cumbersome to do those changes. You have to find yourself replicating them in real, in your production environment, or using a module like Features, where you can export some of the settings into the code and then re-import them. So let's try to export our settings. So if we export, you'll see it'll download all our settings and we can look to see what they look like. They're all stored in JSON files. And if we look at one of those, let's see if we have a, a viewer for this. Otherwise, we will just open it in a, in Atom, this should work here. And we're just going to take a quick look at one of these. The JSON file is very, it's a structured format, which is, is readable. Generally, you're not going to be editing these by hand, but you can see if you had to, it would not be that hard. You, know, you would be able to see what you're looking at. So each one of the different features, different modules has its settings. Different views will have their their own JSON file in here. So this is a big addition to adding this to, to core. This will be included in Drupal 8 and is one of the, the featured improvements that Drupal 8 will bring. So we're going to try to bring in this process and I ran into this problem before. So there is some issue with importing the the configurations. And this is to be expected. This is just release as more people start using this, these bugs will be flushed out. So the rest of the configuration looks pretty much what we're used to. Reports very similar also to what we see in Drupal 7. Let's take a quick look at views before we call it a day. Let's create a quick, quick test view here. And we will do a table of fields, continue and edit. And we can see this is just identical to what we have now. It's a great feature that this is included in core. There are not many Drupal sites that do not use views as a part of their site. Once you start using it, you it is really where the power of Drupal stands the strongest is in the inclusion of views and separates us from many other mo many other CMSs. So we'll save it and we're done here. Go back, look at the site. We can view the content. Here's one other area. It's added views admin, which is really nice. So you can filter very friendly to find pages by the title or by the content type or whether they're published or not. Very nice. And you can see in here views bulk edit is also included in core. So we could go in here and actually promote this piece of content or do whatever you want to it. So that's a quick look at back.
drop CMS version 1.0. We look forward to reviewing this in the future again and watch the progress closely.